Uh, hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. Uh, my name is Anne Kruijt and I'm the host for today's talk. If you're participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation. And we're going to have time to address these questions after the presentation is complete. So today's speaker is Stanislav Beletsky. Stanislav is a lecturer at the Department of Foreign Languages and Literature at the University of Dodoma in Tanzania. He lectures on field linguistics and lexicography and conducts research on Isanzu and Gogo languages. His interests include languages of the Tanzanian Rift, their documentation and description, their formal morphosyntax, lingual botany, and ecological knowledge encapsulated in them. Please join me in welcoming Stanislav as he gives his presentation on demonstratives in Ihansu. Stanislav, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anne. Hello, everyone. Today, I would like to share with you some of the outcomes of my research that I have been doing for the last two years. So the research involves Isanzu or Ihanzu, as the native speakers call this language. And it is spoken in Tanzania, in cent central uh, northern part of Tanzania, in Singibe region, Iramba district. Uh, there is a village that is believed to be the capital of Isanzu, uh, and it is called Ihanzu. Ihanzu. This language is classified as a dialect of Nilamba. However, the speakers believe that they speak their own language and they believe this language is affiliated more to Nyaturu than to Iramba. There are uh, 34,000 speakers according to the ethnologue or 26,000 speakers according to the Atlas of uh, Languages of Tanzania. So, however, you can see the number of speakers is not, not that big. That's why the language is being considered as a threatened. Uh, there are very few papers dedicated to this language or dialect. Uh, I will find only one PhD thesis where data from Isanzu is analyzed uh, together with data from other languages that belong to the zone F. So the title of that PhD thesis is the um, genetic inconsistency of zone F. So the author tries to, <clears throat> tries to prove that F languages are not genetically related, at least uh, not to that extent that we believe they are. Yeah. And he uses at about thousand items from Ihanzo. It's just a word list based on previous field research that was done just in 2018, uh, my colleague from the University of the Doma and I published a paper this year with a brief sketch of phonological and morphological uh, features of Isanzu. There, is also, there are also some presentations done by Andrew Harvey, and he also uploads recordings of this language to the Endangered Languages Archive of the uh, source of the University of London. So these are resources that we have uh, concerning this language. Current research is a part of the project of the University of the Doma structural description and documentation of a threatened Tanzanian language, Isanzu. This research has been carried out in form of two short field stays at Haidon in Manyara region at 4CCP. 4CCP is a cultural institution that aims at promoting and uh, preserving cultural and linguistic diversity of that region. So as I'm sure you know, that place is very well known for the coexistence of the representatives of the four African language families. So the 
the job of this institution is to facilitate contact between cultures, languages, peoples, and to organize a big event once a year where this diversity is celebrated. So the last year I spent several days at Haidon working with one informant. This year I spent several days in Haidon working with two informants. Uh, one informant is Isanzu, Nisanzu. He is 60 years old and he is a community leader. Of course, he is fluent speaker. The other consultant was speaker of Iramba language. Uh, but as it is believed that Isanzu is a dialect of Iramba, so these two varieties are mutually intelligible. So that's why the second speaker was involved. He helped me to type the stories because those stories were handwritten. I mean, the stories that I used as data in this piece of research. And he was acquainted with uh, typing and he helped me to type them. So the outcomes of this uh, research stays are uh, a publication, uh, the data uploaded to the archive and presentation at the conference Language and Economic Development in Africa that took place at the University of Dodoma in May 2019. Current study aims at description of the demonstrative pronoun system in Ihangu. Research questions. What language items can be regarded as demonstrative pronouns in Ihanzu? What are their morphological features? What, are, what is their semantics? What types of usage can be found across the system? I used uh, translational and intralingual elicitation based on questionnaires uh, suggested by Herman Batibo and Wilkins. I also collected several text narratives. So the data consists of one questionnaire and 10 traditional narratives, fairy tales about animals. The theoretical framework consists of general typology of demonstratives and several works dedicated to demonstratives in Bantu languages. Demonstratives are linguistically encoded gestures. They can be free, they can be bound, they can be clitics. They get their interpretation from the context, physical or discursive context. So demonstratives are used to refer to something that is being mentioned within the physical environment of the interaction or within the previous context or even within the future projected context of interaction. There are several types of demonstratives. They can be pronominal, they can be adnominal, they can be adverbs, presentationals, identifiers, even verbs. The last two types are quite rare across languages, but the first four are quite frequent. Demonstratives make a part of datic field of a language. Datic field is made up of language items that are used to signal space, time, person, discourse, and social dimensions. Uh, the function of demonstrative pronouns, the primary function, is to, is to categorize space around the speaker or around hearer. Uh, in many languages, demonstratives also are used for third person pronouns, personal pronouns of the third person. And they have also many functions in discourse. So as I already have said, 
demonstrative pronouns are used exophorically, and this is their primary use. It means they classify the physical uh, environment around the speaker or the hearer. We can distinguish two types, speaker anchored demonstratives, demonstrative systems and addressee anchored demonstrative systems. Uh, in the speaker anchored systems, we can distinguish three or sometimes four, sometimes five categories, proximal, medial and distal. So I would say that Isanzo has these three categories. And they are speaker anchored. We may find the following uses of demonstratives across languages. So first, these uses are classified into deictic and non-deictic, into those that refer to to the referent that shows the referent, and those that are used for more abstract functions. So deictic, deictic use might be exophoric or discursive. Exophoric use is the primary use of demonstratives. Uh, exophoric means the outside. So when the demonstrative is used in exophoric way, means it shows the referent in the physical environment around the speaker or around the hearer. And here we can distinguish several subtypes. Gestural, it means that reference is accompanied by a gesture. Symbolic, that the reference uh, describes the physical environment as a whole, as a unity. Transposed is a reference uh, or reference that is used to switch the focus of attention from speaker to hearer. And these subtypes can be contrastive and non-contrastive in their fulfillment. And I would like to give you some examples from English. So gestural use, this eye hurts, so we're pointing at the eye. Symbolic use, this room is beautiful, while well, being in a place in the room. So symbolic use describes the physical environment as such. Transposed use, this is your glass. Yeah. So there is a switch in focus, there is a switch on in the perspective from my to your, from my to your perspective. non datic use has several subtypes anaphoric and cataphoric use. So anaphoric use is the use of demonstrative to refer to something that has been mentioned previously. Cataphoric use is the use of demonstrative to project something that, that is being said in the next, in, in the following context. Uh, an example of anaphoric use is plop, it sounded like that. So it, uh, sorry, that refers to the first word in this utterance. Empathetic use. Uh, empathetic use uh, is not concerned that much with the physical or uh, previous piece of discourse, with the physical reference of previous piece of discourse. It is used to express some feelings, some, some strong feelings. So I'm not going to read this example. It might insult feelings. Okay. But this is a citation, citation. These are not my examples. And the third subtype is recognition of use. Uh, this type of use uh, aims at uh, reminding the hearer about a mutual, a stock of mutual knowledge that was not mentioned in the previous context, that is not uh, going to be mentioned in the projective, projective context, but that can be used as a general uh, basis for the, 
for the talk and interaction, for the discussion. So, uh, well, um, recognition of use is that use that is based on something that has not been mentioned in the discourse, but that is a presupposition from the mutual memory of, of the speaker and the hearer. And the example here, do you remember that wonderful holiday in Morocco? So the speaker and the hearer might have spent wonderful holiday in Morocco five years ago. There is also the so-called meta-representational views uh, that was described on the data of Vigo language by Steve Nicole. Meta-representational views is an attempt to draw attention to an object or place which the speaker believes the addressee should be capable of representing mentally, even if he does not currently have such a representation in mind. So this is uh, another piece of presumably shared knowledge. In case with recognitional use, we rely on, on the real shared knowledge. In case uh, with meta-representational use, we rely on hypothetical shared knowledge. Uh, demonstratives are also used as filler words in talk in interaction. They form part of repair mechanisms in spoken language. And they have three functions according to the presented study. They may be used as placeholders. They may be used to avoid some, some words that are not permitted for, because of cultural norms. And they may use as interjective hesitator, hesitator. So that was the theoretical framework. Now I would like to draw your attention to the results. So I analyzed questionnaires and I analyzed narratives in Ihanzo and came to the conclusion that the system of demonstrative pronouns in this language consists of five types of pronouns and I call them proximal, medial, distal, specifiers, and discourse dative pronouns. Proximal pronouns are formed by preduplication of the subject marker. So I was able to detect these noun classes in Ihanzo in the previous research and in my data, I could find examples of, of the use of proximal demonstratives with all these nominal classes. Medial uh, pronouns are formed in a similar way, but the last vowel is substituted with O, with referential O. So again, I was able to find forms for all the noun classes. Distal pronouns are equal, so morphologically they are equal to medial pronouns, however they differ in the pronunciation. And here we, we have a case of sound symbolism. So the last O in distal pronouns uh, is pronounced with high tone and is lengthened. And the length of the last vowel indicates the distance between speaker and the referent. So if the distance is, the, 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 the further the distance, the longer the last vowel. This is symbolic use. And again, I was able to find forms for all noun classes. The next type of demonstrative pronouns is so-called specifier. 
specifier is restricted to the, the use of specifier is restricted to the semantics of the noun. It may be used with, with words that denote human and locations. So it can be used with the classes one, two, 16, 17, 18, and uh, other classes if they have nouns with these semantics. In this example, it is used also in class number three with the word field, Mogunda. Because field is a space, it's a somehow locative expression. That's why this kind of specifier can be used together with it. The meaning of the specifier can be translated roughly as this here or that there. To form this, to express, to encode this meaning, uh, stem anso is used. Even if the noun does not allow to use this stem as a part of the noun phrase, it can be, can be used with this noun through the possessive formant a. And then the meaning would be something like uh, that egg that is a bit far away. And if we take as an example, class number four, class number, number five, sorry, excuse me, class number five, that egg that is a little bit far from the speaker, that egg that is further from the speaker, and that egg that is very far from the speaker, uh, and it might be not visible as well. So this remote, very distal meaning, pa form is used, panguanso. Uh, so panguanso is used to refer to something that is not visible. Form kunguanso, class number 17, is used to refer to something that is a, a, a bit far from the speaker. And form munguanso, class 18, is used to refer to something that is inside of something like in a bag. Yeah. So the egg is in the bag, munguanso, that will be used with munguanso. Another type of demonstrative that I call discourse dating demonstrative is a special usage of possessive pronoun ite and it's, uh, it's uh, allomorph ito. The meaning of this possessive is awa. So this is the possessive of first person plural, awa. Uh, it is used as a part of noun phrase and in special contexts, it might be, it refers to, it has a function of anaphoric device. And also it may function as a contrastive device. So if there is a need to talk about two entities separately. So I will give some examples later. And coming back to the specify to the stem answer, uh, I, I should say that this stem is used to form personal pronoun, uh, third person singular and plural. Uh, Nguanso is third person singular, Neanso is third person plural. So these are the types of uses and the structures that encode them that I was able to find in my data. I was able to find gestural use and it is encoded by proximal, medial and distance pronouns, demonstrative pronouns, sometimes with specifiers. Symbolic use is encoded by medial pronouns, 
transposed use was not among the examples. Contrastive use is encoded by noun phrase that consists of noun, proximal, demonstrative, and possessive. Anaphoric use is encoded by proximal demonstrative. Empathetic use is encoded by medial demonstrative in reduplication or proximal demonstrative in inversion. So normally demonstratives follow the noun, but in empathetic use, they precede the noun. Recognitional use is encoded by a noun phrase that consists of noun, proximal, demonstrative, and possessive. Meta-representational use is encoded by the stem ANSO with locative prefixes. Uh, demonstrative as filler words were not attested in the data. Discourse data use is encoded by noun phrase consisting of noun, proximal demonstrative possessive. Another way of encode this meaning is to use the stem ANSO. And I would like to show you some examples. So gestural use. The one child who is here is mine. Omwana oyo apa wane. So you can see the proximal demonstrative is being used after the noun. Another example of gestural use, the two eggs which are yonder are mine. Imagine and bere na mole konganzo ane. Here we can see the use of the stem anzo with the locative prefixes of the classes 17 and 18. Uh, the prefix of the class 18 is also used in the existential verb amoli. Contrastive use. This egg is chicken egg, this egg is guinea fowl egg. So in English we would, would rather say that egg. But in Hanzo, uh, in both cases, proximal are used. Ije ile ite ne yankuku. To show the contrast, the, the speakers use the possessive ite. Stem is te, ours, ours. So it is grammaticalized to encode this contrast. Symbolic use. The story ends here, that the final remark in the traditional narratives in fairy tale. homo lahila papo. So we can see that the symbolic use involves medial demonstrative. And this medial demonstrative with the locative prefix from the class 16 refers to that certain point of the story where the speaker and the listeners are currently, so at the very end of the story. Discourse data cues. Those children whom we talked about, Iana Awaite, Nkitamwela, Nyana Awa. So the reference point the referent is anchored in the previous discourse that is repeated here. Those whom we talked about, we talked about Kitanguela, we talked about them. And when we refer to something that has been taught previously, uh, when we refer to a uh, to a close, to a relative close. This construction is used. Proximal demonstrative and the possessive. Anaphoric use. 
there is a, um, so there is a context. After the elephants killed the mother elephant and cut its stomach, they found hair inside there. So the hair, the trickster, the one who is always foolish in other animals, was inside the the mother elephant. Yeah, and that's why the other elephants were afraid. So they have found him inside the stomach of the of the mother. Monyangala Oyo Wakaela. And this hair said. So you can see that the proximal demonstrative is used after the noun. Anaphoricus. Cataphoricus. At that time, when she used to bring food to the snake, the woman came to the cave. So it is a story about the woman who took care uh, of a snake who lived in a cave. Ematongo yayo noileta india pomosongo wakapika pakikigaya. Here we can see that the medial demonstrative is used to project the context, the relative clause that follows the noun. Empathetic use. That same knight came with his, with his jug. So this is a story about the hare and the other animals who decided to dig a well because they wanted to have some water in the dry season, but the hare did not take part in the work. And the animal decided not to let him drink the water from the well, but of course he found a way to fool the, the guards. Well, coming with his own jug of water, of, of, of beer. Otiko wo 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 omongani la akapika akedza nongwashindi wakwe. So we can see that medial demonstrative is reduplicated to emphasize, to emphasize the, the, usage, the usage of the noun. Another example of empathetic use. The same day the last born started to construct the airplane. This is a story about three brothers who went far away from their home to the savannah and who found, who found lions there. So they just, this lion, they are trying to escape the danger. They decided to to build an airplane. Lolo Lohiko Okwango Akatula Zepia Itule. So we can see that the proximal demonstrative is being placed before the noun. This is the emphatic use in contrast to the normal use after the noun. Recognitional use. Those brothers whom you should remember as a listener, covered the drum and went. So this is a story about three brothers who had a task to find a magical drum. So the last born, the youngest one, as in many stories, found the drum and the other two just took this drum away from him and they killed him, brother. And the, these brothers are being reintroduced into the, into the context after a long stretch of talk dedicated to other topic. So the reintroduction of these characters happens uh, through the reference to that shared knowledge that the listener and the speaker have about this, these two characters. And to encode this meaning, the possessive is used, aite. Another example of recognition use. People caught him and sang this song. So they caught the, the youngest brother. Yantu akamuamba amokemba ite. So ite 
possessive refers to the song that follows. And this song must be familiar to the listener, to the competent listener, because as the native speakers explained to me, uh, the competent speakers know the traditional stories and they retrieve them from their memory through the songs. There are, uh, in many of the narratives, there are um, short songs. And these songs uh, function as titles for the narratives. So this particular song must be familiar to the listener. Although it is not a projection, it is reference to the shared cultural knowledge, shared traditional knowledge. Meta representation views. There in Germany, Kongwans or German, we can see that for reference to the hypothetically common stock of knowledge, the speakers use the stem anso with two locative prefixes, 17 and 18. So the speaker assumes that the listener knows this country, Germany, or Germany. I would like to conclude my presentation with a summary of the findings. So morphologically and semantically, I distinguish five types of demonstrative pronouns. Proximal, medial, distal, specifiers, and discourse deictic pronouns. Uh, in my data, I was able to find the following types of usage. Gestural, uh, contrastive, symbolic, discourse deictic, anaphoric, cataphoric, empathetic, recognitional, meta-representation. I was not able to find transposed use and use of demonstratives as filler words. Because I didn't have, so to say, um, more authentic data, uh, conversations, real conversations. So what I have to focus on further is talk and interaction. I hope to be able to continue my research and to collect more data that would not be that would consist not only of narratives but also of conversations, of talk and interaction. And then I will have chance to analyze this function of demonstrative pronouns. Uh, further tasks to do are verification of the results through statistic analysis and further interviews with native speakers because I understand quite well, quite well that I have limited amount of data and the conclusions might be preliminary. And the other area of research concerns freestanding forms. I could find some of them in my data, but however, I was not able to make generalizations about this items. So these items are personal pronouns, adverbs, and functional words that are derived from, uh, from the stems of demonstrative pronouns. I thank you for the attention and I am thrilled to listen to your questions. Okay, thank you very much, Stanislav. I'm now going to open the floor for the comments or questions. So please leave them in the chat module and uh, I will read them out. Um, to give everyone some time to just type in their questions, I'm going to start with one of my own. Um, so I have a question about the uh, recognitional use. So I think it's going to be examples 8a and 8b. And I was wondering there, so um, they use the, the first plural possessive um, to, to refer to here, it seems like the main characters. So I was wondering, do you always find these references with the main characters of the story or with any reference within the story? Uh, it can be found with any reference. And the way of reading, the way of understanding should be as 
as it seems to me, uh, the character that did that and that and that and that before is again with us, is being reintroduced. So this possessive, the use of possessive summarizes the previous episode that involved the character. And it, it is used after quite a long stretch of narrative so it somehow he introduces the character and the idea is just to remind the listener of what happened to this character before okay thank you um then i think we can go to a question from andrew who says it's really nice to see the demonstrative series analyzed in a topological way and he asked if you found any reduplicated forms. Yes, I found reduplicated forms. Let me go back to that slide. So reduplicated forms are used for empathetic function. Um, so we can translate this, we can express this function in English maybe roughly as the same day, at the same moment, at, this, at the very same moment, so they're used to highlight the attention. They're used to show that something happened immediately. Um, Martin's question has been answered, I believe. Uh, but he has another question. So he asks, what is the Yahansu equivalent of Swahili Hivyo? So uh, I was not able to, so I found some of the examples but I was not able to make generalizations because the examples are very few. I think only three of them. I think Mart still wants to ask if you have instances of that and that. Uh, yeah, I think in opposition to you have this and this, where English would say this and that. So uh, apart from this and this, would you also have this, uh, that and that? No, I'm afraid I have not found this type of usage. Okay. And I have another question from Andrew. Um, he asked, was the demonstrative heads, um, and I cannot pronounce this, but Uyumuntu order only found for emphatic use, or did you find it in other constructions as well? So the, the, the inversion. Yes. Could you please uh, repeat it? the inversion? Yeah. Uh, inversion might be also found in noun phrases uh, with predication with the uh, predicate sense. Uh, like these are, so the story is about those three brothers who found, who, who went far away to the savannah and who found uh, three girls living there. But these girls were actually lions. Yeah? So they, Simba, they were able to, to look like human beings, but they were lions. And he explained it to the brothers with this type of construction, with the inversion. These are lines. Hayo Ihimba. All right, I think that were all the questions there were. I don't see any one of them appear. Okay, so then it just leaves me to thank you again for this really interesting presentation. Uh, and thank everyone who participated for their questions and comments. Uh, I'd like to take also this opportunity to remind everyone that the recordings of all the presentation in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. Uh, looking ahead, the next presentation in the webinar series will be given on Wednesday, December 11th by Helen Ethan and it's titled A Formal Typology of Class Linkage in Sadawe. I would like to thank Stanislav again for his presentation and everyone else for participating today. And I hope to see you again at our next uh, webinar. Thank you.